Hello everyone, welcome back to Dutch and Go. Um, today we're going to be talking about the differences between um, Dutch and Flemish and what the main differences are and why it's important to know the differences especially for intermediate learners. Just generally speaking, for beginners, I do not think that the differences between Dutch as spoken in the Netherlands versus Dutch as spoken in Belgium is all that important. It does start to come into play once you reach an intermediate level. So from, let's say, A to B1 onwards, then it does start to come into play and you might want to consider some of these things that I'm mentioning here in this video. Also, just for context and, you know, nomination kind of thing, what we, terminology rather, it's important that we talk about the same things. So first of all, the main difference between Belgium and the Netherlands is the difference in the language landscape. The Netherlands has uh, the standardized Dutch, which from now on I'll be referring to as Netherlandic Dutch. And then they also have a bunch of dialects and a sort of spoken Dutch, which is sort of really quite close to standardized Netherlandic Dutch. Then on the other hand, you have Belgium, where you have three official languages, uh, uh, Dutch and French and German. However, um, when I'm talking about Dutch from Belgium, I'll be talking about Belgian Dutch. And that is, again, the standardized variation, a standardized version of Dutch as spoken in Belgium, which is mainly spoken in Flanders and then partially in Brussels too. However, the landscape in contrast with the Netherlands is a little bit different. Uh, in Belgium, we also have spoken Flemish, which we call Tussentaal, in between standardized language and dialect. Later on, in a couple of weeks' time, there'll be a video about specifically this one, Tussentaal, in which I'll be discussing the, the, the features and the characteristics and, and its origins and, and, and things like that. Uh, but for now, I'll just leave it at that. Uh, and then we also, as I said, we have a bunch of dialects as spoken in the provinces and, and cities and villages and, and things like that. Also for context sake, of course, when people are talking about how different uh, Dutch uh, from the Netherlands versus Dutch from, the, from Belgium is, etc., they're often referring to spoken Dutch, Dutch as it is spoken. And of course, once people start talking in their own respective dialect from their own respective village, no matter whether they're from West Flanders on the one hand versus maybe uh, Limburg on the other, or West Flanders on the one hand versus maybe Groningen on the other, uh, the communication uh, problems will start to arise no matter what. So uh, that's something important to consider. We're not talking here about the differences between all of the dialects and, and, and spoken language. No, 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 no. We're just talking about the differences in um, standardized Belgian Dutch on the one hand and standardized Netherlandic Dutch on the other. And once you really start to dig in, yeah, you're gonna notice some differences, but ultimately the differences are still rather superficial and also grammatically speaking there's nothing really really important to take, take into consideration. Also finally I should mention before I dive into the differences there's one I think cultural difference which is the difference in formality. The Netherlands has a tendency to be a lot less formal than Flanders than Belgium in general um, and also in spoken Flemish we have a particularly weird usage of U, the formal version of jij, je, u, um, but that's only in spoken Flemish, not standardized Flemish, and if you want to learn more about that, I've made a previous video which you can check out here. Not there, here. Uh, so basically that's what you need to know. Also, for intermediate to advanced learners, I should also say that there are not a lot of textbooks in standardized Belgian Dutch. Most of the textbooks that you'll find will be in Netherlandic Dutch and not in Belgian Dutch. I will give some recommendations uh, in, in the, or rather in the description box down below, you can check that out. But in general, that can be an issue if you really want to study Belgian Dutch 
you're gonna struggle a little bit finding good material for that. And before we get really into the main differences, one final thing that I want to mention uh, is that the differences, let's say, between standardized Belgian Dutch that you might learn in textbooks and spoken Flemish Tussentaal on the streets is bigger than the difference between Netherlandic Dutch as you might learn in textbooks versus spoken Dutch as you might hear in a, on the streets in, in an informal conversation. So be aware of that when you go to Belgium and, and you study standardized Belgian Dutch, uh, you might be in for a bit of a bigger shock than if you had uh, studied Netherlandic Dutch from the Netherlands and then be, are confronted with spoken Dutch on the street, which is sort of a little bit more closely linked. But again, there I would also have to say that it depends a little bit also on the region because, for example, in the north or deeply in the south, Limburg or Groningen, there are people also a lot more dialects, like, attached to their own dialect. So, you know, keep it in mind. It's complicated. You'll get there. Let's get to the main differences. Um, first of all, um, just generally, none of these differences are universally applicable. These are general tendencies that are more or less true but it of course doesn't mean that there might be exceptions and I would love to hear from you in the comment box down below what, what you think and what your experience is but these are all differences that also play out on um, on the level of standardized Dutch so Netherlandic Dutch versus Belgian Dutch and I'm not even going to touch upon spoken language neither from the Netherlands nor from Belgium because that would lead us way 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 too far. Difference number one the pronunciation, and specifically maybe here the pronunciation of vowels. So in the Netherlands, there's a tendency towards diphthongs of uh, vowels, such as E in Belgium, in Belgian Dutch, it's E, E, whereas in the Netherlands, it's A, A, A. So you move towards a J at the end, A. Uh, or another one is the O in Belgian Dutch, O. O, O, whereas in Netherlandic Dutch it would become O, 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 with a slight V at the end. So that would lead to words like Ne, Belgian Dutch, Ne, Netherlandic Dutch, Groot, Belgian Dutch, Groot, Netherlandic Dutch. It would also mean that when, when it comes to actual diphthongs, um, that the diphthongs in the Netherlandic Dutch will be a lot harsher. So let's compare e e e j, which becomes a in Belgian Dutch, train, will become a. So it's a lot more open. You open your mouth a lot more in Netherlandic Dutch. Wij, train, zij, etc. Or for example, o u, which in Belgian Dutch becomes au. Koud, zout, blau. Or, on the other hand, Netherlandic Dutch, where that becomes a lot harsher. Au. So the starting point is more like an a. Au, zout, koud, blau, etc. Another difference is, is in the consonants. G. Uh, in uh, Belgian Dutch, that would be a more gentle G in the mouth, which I personally can't do very well because I'm with Flemish, so therefore I am impaired. He, he, which you sort of make by pushing air between your tongue and the roof of your mouth at the back. He, he, versus the he, the throat he, that you make in the Netherlandic Dutch. He, he, so that would result in words like Groot, goed, Belgian Dutch. Groot, goed, Netherlandic Dutch. Difference number two. Vocabulary differences. Yeah, yay. I thought you were never going to mention it. I know, this is a really fun part where I go over some main uh, differences uh, in, in vocabulary between uh, Belgian Dutch versus Netherlandic Dutch. This has been often mythologized, exaggerated, etc. I personally don't think that a lot of these words would really lead to huge communication differences. I think they would just be like markers where people would, you know, if you use one of these words in the wrong 
country, that is to say, they would just rather roll their eyes and go like, oh, Dutchies or oh, Flemish. That kind of thing, rather than that it would lead to actual problems of communication, I can't really imagine that since, again, we're only talking here about standardized Belgian Dutch or standardized Netherlandic Dutch and not about spoken Dutch. So, you know, I think I wouldn't focus too much on these differences. I wouldn't break my head over them. I feel like in a lot of language videos and, and content, this is sort of the main difference and it scares people like, oh my God, so many different words. Meh. But ultimately, if it doesn't lead to huge communication problems, I don't worry about it. Why should you? Let's go. So I'll be first always reading the Belgian Dutch word and then I'll be reading the Netherlandic Dutch word. You'll be able to follow along with me in the um, subtitles below where you'll also see the English translation of each word. Let's go. Sinaasappelsap, jus d'orange, frieten, frietjes, patat, schoonbroer, zwager, cinema, bioscoop, bioscoop, rekening, bon, bonnetje, zakje, tasje. Croque, croque monsieur, tosti. Ik zie je graag, ik hou van jou, ik hou van jou. I like that one, ik zie je graag, I like to see you, or I love seeing you. I, I really, I really like that one, it also implies that, you know, like you're really seeing the person for who he or she is. I don't know, I think it's a really cute way of saying that. Sorry, continue. Plat water. Spablau. Bruisend water, spuitwater, spa rood. Wijsheidstand, verstandskies. Zetel, sofa. Bank, sofa. Difference number three. Colloquialisms. Again, same applies here. I don't think this would lead to huge communication problems or people wouldn't really understand you, but again, it would just be like a marker whether someone is from, you know, Belgium or the Netherlands. Uh, and again, I'm also not saying that universally in the Netherlands, universally in, in Belgium slash Flanders, everybody speaks like this. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying this is sort of normally an indication where someone is from. Again, same thing applies. First I'll read the Belgian Dutch and then I'll read the Netherlandic Dutch and below you'll find the, the transcription and the translation. Hallo. Dag. Bye. Hoi. Doei. Doeg. Merci. Bedankt. Dank je. Enorm. Ongelooflijk. Hartstikke. Ongelooflijk. Hoe is het? Hoe is het? Hoe gaat hij? Hoe gaat hij? Of hoe is hij? Super. Fantastisch. Top. Geweldig. Wel. Nou. Leuk. Gezellig. Which brings me to number four, usage of diminutives. And this is related to the culture of the Netherlands. In the Netherlands, it's a lot more like this culture of gezellig, the last word. Uh, gezellig, which means sort of cozy, nice, comfortable. You can use it as a reaction. Zullen we vanavond een uh, glas wijn drinken? Ja, yeah, gezellig. Nice, cozy, comfortable. You can use it as a reaction. In Belgium, we would never do that. It also means that in the Netherlands, there's a general tendency to use a lot more diminutives in standardized Netherlandic Dutch than there is in standardized Belgian Dutch. Um, so for example, in the Netherlands, in Netherlandic Dutch, it would be quite common, you could say a sentence like, we zitten op een terrasje in het zonnetje en we drinken een heerlijk wijntje. Whenever you use a diminutive uh, in Netherlandic Dutch or in Belgian Dutch, it's an indication that you are cozy, comfortable, that something is 
nice and pleasant. If you want to have more information about diminutives and how to actually make them, check out my previous video about that here. Um, I should also mention there is a Flemish way of making diminutives, which is que, que, and in spoken Flemish Dutch, we do tend to make more diminutives. Um, but again, I'm not going to be touching upon that because today I'm only talking about standardized Belgian Dutch and standardized Netherlandic Dutch, but that's also mentioned in my video about diminutives, so check that out if you want to learn more. That's it. That was my long, epic, final takedown of the differences between Netherlandic Dutch and Belgian Dutch. I hope it was clear for all of you. Bear in mind, I mean, again, I was talking here about standardized Dutch and it doesn't mean that that is universally always the case in your situation, uh, depending on what kind of family you are from, uh, what kind of surroundings you are in, how standardized someone is speaking or not. Uh, but generally, I would say, don't be too discouraged um, about the differences between, on the one hand, standardized Netherlandic Dutch and spoken Netherlandic Dutch, which again are relatively minor. And also don't be too discouraged with the differences between Belgian Dutch, standardized versus spoken Flemish Tussentaal. Um, because really what you should focus on is about being understood by other people. And with standardized Dutch, no matter how frustrating it might seem it might sometimes be, you know, depending on where you might eventually move or, or travel or who you might end up talking to. The chances are that you will be universally understood with standardized Dutch across the Netherlands and Belgium, uh, or rather Flanders, Brussels, are quite, quite high. Um, and, and that is, of course, the good news. The thing that you have to work on is understanding other people. So that also means, yeah, well, you might need to, uh, if you move to Flanders, uh, you might need to watch some videos in Flemish, in, in, in spoken Flemish, in informal Flemish, maybe something on VRT, maybe something on Netbox, uh, maybe a series, a lot of series are in Tessenthal, that's excellent practice material too, and that way you'll get used to it. But if you always speak standardized Dutch, no matter in the Netherlands or in Belgium, you're always going to be understood no matter what. And that is the good news. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a comment in the comment box down below if you have any questions, comments, criticism? I don't know. Uh, and yeah, I would just love to hear from you. Subscribe, like, hit the bell, you know the drill. Thank you all for the kijken. Tot de volgende keer. Dag. And doei.